Hey, my friend, welcome to a new lesson. Today, I'm going to show you two concepts that you can borrow from the music of Hans Zimmer to make beautiful, simple chord progressions. So I was listening to a song from my dear friend, Perry Frank, and I noticed that the chord progression was beautiful because it was using some elements that I personally associated with the song's interstellar main theme and the song Time from the movie Inception, both written by Hans Zimmer. Uh, it was probably uh, unconscious from Perry Frank, but I would like to listen to a little bit of his song and then analyze uh, what he made in his song that is similar to what Hans Zimmer does in his movie music. So it starts with a simple two chord progression. We are in the key of A minor and we play an A minor chord first. So that's basically an A minor shape from the fourth string. This is the same shape as the D minor chord, the open D minor, but we just play it up the fretboard from the seventh fret. And the second chord is a G6. A G major 6 chord and I think that it's really nice to use a G6 chord at this place because usually we would have to play a dominant 7 chord to follow the harmonization but I think it doesn't work with the kind of uh, mood we want to get for the song. It sounds almost too bluesy for it so playing a G6 makes it sweeter, so I think it's a great choice here. And then on top of these chords, these little arpeggios of these two chords, he's going to play a longer pr chord progression that goes like this. F, G, A minor, and G, and then we repeat it, but the second time it's F, C, A minor, and G. So if I play them as volume swells like in the original song and I loop the little uh, arpeggios of the first two chords, that's going to sound like this. So simple, but so effective at the same time and so beautiful. So let's explain what's happening here and why I associate that with Hans Zimmer. Uh, because the first set of four chords, the F, G, A minor and G, I associate that with the song Interstellar that usually goes like this. So he plays exactly the same chords, but just in a different context here. So if you want to know more about this, I have a full lesson uh, explaining why the song Interstellar has an addictive chord progression. You could click on the upper card to watch the whole lesson, but in a nutshell, it's because we are in the key of A minor and we start with the F chord, which is not the root chord, but it's a similar chord to the root chord. They share many notes in common between the F chord and the A minor chord. So it's not fully resolved, but it's like semi-resolved at the beginning. And then we have the G chord in the middle that's like a magnet, 
we we this is the middle ground we go to a chord and we come back on it all the times and it just has an attraction to the G chord and the G chord is a tension chord in the key of A minor we want we want it to resolve on A minor to go back home on where it feels comfortable to resolve the key but we end up always dwelling on the middle chord here so that with the chord at the beginning of the progression that's not the root chord and not fully resolved makes for an, an addictive result and Perry Frank used exactly the same concept in his song. So once again if you want to know more and catch the full lesson this is here on the upper chord. And I also associated something uh, that I found in the song Time from Inception. So if I play the chord progression from Time, it sounds like this. So if you noticed in this chord progression, we have exactly the same sequence. There is just one chord that changes between the first set of four chords and the second set of four chords. This is the sixth chord that changes. So instead of playing A minor followed by E minor, we play the second time A minor followed by C major seven. And the major 7, the 7th extended note, is on top. It's like the melody on top and it adds a beautiful tension on top. Right here, it's really, really expressive to use that. And Perry Frank did exactly the same thing. The chord progression is F, G, A minor, G. And the second time he plays F, C, A minor, G. So, in that case, that's also the sixth chord of the progression that is modified for a new chord. And when we play the G, uh, the, the C chord, excuse me, with the swell, this is on top of the little G6 arpeggio. So if I superimpose the C and the little G6 that does this, That's a really hard chord to fret. It is not supposed to be played at one time. You should play this separately. But what it does is a beautiful extended C chord that does a C major nine. We have the seventh, but we also have a ninth. So it's exactly the same concept here. He modified the sixth chord of the progression just to add a little variation the second time and that sixth chord is more extended. It has more colors. It is more expressive because of the added seventh, the added ninth. It's even more extended in Perry Frank's song that it is in time from Hans Zimmer. But I found really interesting that it's exactly the same concept from a little bit of interstellar and a little bit of time here. So what you can do if you want to get that kind of mood for your songs too, is to play in a minor key and use the flat six chord, the flat seven chord and the root chord, but never fully resolve on the root chord. Take advantage of these ones and uh, on the sixth chord of the, pro the progression, on the second, repetition you can use a different chord in that case that was the flat three chord the third chord in a minor uh, harmonization and create more extensions on it for more expressiveness so i hope that it gave you a few ideas to borrow from the book of hans zimmer thank you so much uh, to perry frank uh, to make this beautiful music that I can analyze. You can check out his channel. I will put it in the description box below. And if you are new on my channel, somehow I offer all of my new viewers my free mini course on ambient guitar chords. If you like the little chords from time that I played, 
This is exactly what I show you in my course, how to play those little spread triad shapes like these, how to play them in minor, major, diminished, uh, suspended chords, and how to play them all over the fretboard in any key you want. So that's super valuable and you can get that first link in the description box if you want to go further than what I showed you in this lesson today. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, au revoir.